In this tutorial, I will show you how to install Ubuntu Server 22.04 on a Raspberry Pi board. We will first flash Ubuntu Server on an SD card and then find the Raspberry Pi IP address and get an SSH connection to it. So the first step to do is actually to flash Ubuntu Server on an SD card. And to do that, we are going to use a software named Raspberry Pi Imager. And where do we find this software? Well, you can go to raspberrypi.com and then you will find something like software and you can find here Raspberry Pi Imager. So you can see Raspberry Pi OS. That's not the one we're going to install. We're going to install Ubuntu Server. But with this Raspberry Pi Imager, you will see we will be able to uh, get Ubuntu Server as well. So just download whatever version uh, is for your operating system right now. So if you have Windows, you click on Windows. It should install it and make sure you can see here I have Imager 1.7.2. Make sure you have at least 1.7. Then it doesn't really matter, but at least 1.7. I'm going to install this. So if you have a pop up for the installation, you click on yes and then you can just uh, follow. So install. OK, and then Raspberry Pi Imager is installed. Now to launch it, well, you may have something on the desktop, but you can just otherwise click on the Windows button here or just browse into your application for Raspberry Pi Imager and just launch it. And you may also have a pop up. You click on yes to allow uh, the software to work. All right. And you have Raspberry Pi Imager here. So now you will take your SD card. So actually your micro SD card. And make sure you have a micro SD card with a class 10, okay, not lower, and at least 8 gigabytes of space. I would recommend uh, to go with 16 or more, but at least 8. So you can put the SD card into the slot uh, on your computer or using an adapter, whatever works for you. And then let's choose here, choose OS. So click on this button. And the default operating system is Raspberry Pi OS, but that's not the one we want. So we're going to go to this other general purpose OS and you can see Ubuntu. So we click on Ubuntu and then you have Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server here. And we have Ubuntu server with 32 bit and 64 bit. So we are going to choose 64 bit. So here I am personally using a Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigabytes of RAM. If you are using this one or the Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes of RAM, I would suggest you choose the 64 bit uh, Raspberry Pi 400 also. But then if you are using Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 or all the versions, maybe uh, just use the 32 bit. So I'm going to choose 64 bit here. I click on Ubuntu Server 22.0 with 64 bit. OK, and then choose storage. And this is the SD card. So it's a 32 gigabytes SD card. So that's the one I have mounted. All right. And now before you click on right, we are going to do some configuration. You can click on this icon here, the setting icon. If you don't have the setting icon, it means that you don't have a Raspberry Pi Imager that's recent enough. So please download the latest version of Raspberry Pi Imager. And now on those advanced options, what we're going to do is we're going first to click here to enable SSH and keep uh, use password authentication. So with SSH, that's basically how we're going to be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So very important to check that one. Then you go down, set username and password. So username by default is Pi. Okay, you can leave it like this or you can just use whatever you want. And then I'm going to use password. So you just put a password here. But whatever you want, make sure it is secured enough. And then we are going to configure Wi-Fi. So I click here on configure wireless LAN and the SSID is the name of the Wi-Fi. So here, this is already filled. Why? Because I'm already connected to a Wi-Fi network here. That's called your Wi-Fi network, which is actually my phone. I've put uh, as a hotspot and for the simplicity of this tutorial, I've named my uh, network your wi-fi network okay so just replace with yours and well make sure that actually the name that's here and the password 
correspond to the same network as the one that you are connected with your computer. And that's very important. Why is that? Because in order to get access to the Raspberry Pi from this computer, you will need, of course, to be in the same network. So if you make the Raspberry Pi connect to another network than this computer, of course, that's not going to work. So, well, make sure that you have the correct Wi-Fi name and password. And then we can go down. Um, you can already set the locale settings. So my time zone is Paris and keyboard layout is actually not US for me. It's actually a French keyboard. So if you don't have a standard keyboard, you just uh, choose your keyboard here. And then, well, that's pretty much it. So to recap, you click on enable SSH, you set the username and password, you configure the Wi-Fi, and you set the locale settings with the time zone and keyboard layout. All right, now that should be good. You can click on save. And now what you can do is, well, you click on write. Okay, so everything on the SD card will be erased. Okay, make sure you don't have any data that you wanted to keep because everything will be uh, erased. Once you are sure, you click on yes. And then, well, it's gonna download the operating system and it's gonna write it. So you can wait a few minutes here. All right, and once you see this, well, the Ubuntu server has been successfully flashed uh, into your SD card. You can click on continue. You can close this and remove the SD card from your computer. Now take your Raspberry Pi board. So here I have the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna put the SD card inside the slot. Okay, make sure it is powered off. That's very important. And then you can power on the Raspberry Pi. And to power on the Raspberry Pi, make sure that you don't just uh, use a cable between the Raspberry Pi and your computer, for example, because there will not be enough power. So use a correct power adapter. So maybe when you bought the Raspberry Pi, you already have a power adapter, so that's fine. Otherwise, you can use a phone charger. Okay, and the ideal is to have at least two amps on the phone charger or on the power adapter. So you boot the Raspberry Pi. And so what's going to happen when you boot the Raspberry Pi? Well, you will see the red LED on and then you will see the green LED flashing a bit randomly. And that's good. It means that the Raspberry Pi is booting. And now, well, the Raspberry Pi should automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. And to be able to find the IP address, because you will need the IP address to be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi, well, you can use different tools. And here I'm going to show you using the Angry IP Scanner. So you can go to angryip.org and click on download. And you can see the instructions here. So let's quit this. You can see the instruction for uh, Windows, Mac and Linux. So I like this tool because it's uh, multi-platform. So for Windows, well, you just click on Windows installer and you can install like any other software. If you have Mac OS, you will first need to, so you can click here and install Java 11 or New Year. And then you can click here depending on what you have on the Mac. All right, just follow the instructions to install. And on Linux, you also have instructions here. So in my case, I am on Windows. So I've already installed it. So otherwise you just click on Windows installer, you download it, you click on the installer and you install like any other software. And once it is installed, let's actually start it. So let's search for Angry IP Scanner. All right, let's put it there. And very important thing, make sure that your computer right here is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the one that you have put on the SD card. Okay, that's the first thing to check. Once you have this, go back here. You will see the host name is your current computer here. And then you can click on IP here. And you will find something like this. Here I have Wi-Fi. So find something that is similar to this, so to the Wi-Fi. You may have something starting with 192.168. You may also have something that starts with 10.0, okay, in some cases. But usually there's going to be something like that. So I click on that and you will see I will have 192.168. And then basically this is the network I have. So the important thing to check here is that the last number, so you have four numbers. The last number should be zero on that one. And the last number should be 255 on that one. OK, 
Okay, so that's the range of IP addresses that we're gonna scan and hopefully the Raspberry Pi is somewhere in the middle. Great, maybe what you can do also is click on this and you will also click on Mac vendor and put it on the left, okay? And click on, okay, so now you have Mac vendor. And this will be useful in some situations. So we will have the IP address, the ping, the host name, and the port for everything that we scan. But sometimes, well, you will find some stuff, okay? You will find some devices, but you will not necessarily know if this is a Raspberry Pi or not. So with the Mac vendor, you're gonna have the Raspberry Pi written here. So now you can click on start and you just wait. So you will need to wait a few seconds. Okay, and you can see scanning completed. You click on close and now let's actually click on ping, sort by ping. Okay, so whatever is in red, it means nothing has been found. And in blue, something has been found. And you can see, so I have my computer here, something else here. And right there, Raspberry Pi. You can see a Raspberry Pi trading in the Mac vendor. Okay, so I don't have host name. If you had configured the host name uh, when flashing actually the SD card, you could have seen something here. But now I can see Raspberry Pi with the Mac vendor. So I have found the Raspberry Pi IP address here, which is 192.168.192.16. So that's my IP address, okay? Of course, it's gonna be different for you. And now we are almost done. How to get access to Ubuntu server on the Raspberry Pi? Well, I'm gonna open a terminal. So let's uh, search for CMD here. Let's open a command prompt on Windows. You can open a terminal if you are on Mac OS and Linux. So that's the same thing. And the instructions here are gonna be the same for all operating systems. Okay, so make sure that you have also Windows 10 at least. So you can use SSH on the command line. And you're going to do, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit maybe here. All right, like this. And you're going to do SSH and then the username. So what is the username? The username for me was Pi. Okay, I didn't change it. If you have changed it, make sure that you use the new one. So SSH space username at, and then the IP address 192.168.192.76. I just directly use the one that I have found here. And now I can press enter. Okay, I can uh, click on yes. Okay, and just one thing before we go further, before I press enter on the yes, if you have any error here that says that you can't connect or whatever, then open a file manager, okay? And go to actually, so users, your user, and then you will maybe find a .ssh folder. Okay, and you have noun housed. So if you have an error at this point, you can remove, okay? You can just, uh, how to do that, show more options. You can just delete this file and then it's gonna work, okay? So now I press yes, okay. And you can see now it's asking the password. So I'm gonna put the password that I have provided before when I configured the user on the SD card. And the password is correct. And now, as you can see, I am on the Raspberry Pi. So Pi at Ubuntu, great. So I am not connected in the Raspberry Pi using SSH. And maybe I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna do, so sudo apt update. So let's put the password again. I'm gonna upgrade the packages, okay, to finish the installation because the installation is complete. We have access to the Raspberry Pi. So we have access to your Ubuntu server but we still need to upgrade the packages because not everything will be upgraded. Okay, and now you can see I have 81 packages that can be upgraded. So I'm gonna do a sudo apt upgrade. And well, that's quite a lot. I put yes, and let's wait for maybe here a few minutes. Okay, and well, I have this, I'm just gonna click on okay. So uh, you can use the right arrow to select okay and 
Okay, just click on OK. And here, well, if you have this to ask you which services should be restarted, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to reboot a Raspberry Pi, which is going to restart the services anyway. So you can press tab here and select OK. And well, everything is now updated. Let's run another command. Let's do sudo apt auto remove. OK, maybe we have stuff that we can remove. Nothing to remove. So now the system is correctly upgraded. And let's do now a sudo reboot. So it's going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. Of course, we lose the connection to the Raspberry Pi. So we are back to the terminal here on Windows. So let's wait approximately one minute. So it depends. Sometimes it can be 20, 30 seconds. It depends on your Raspberry Pi. Let's wait about one minute. And then you can just rerun the SSH command and then connect. And you are back to the Raspberry Pi. Everything is correctly updated. And congratulations, you have successfully installed Ubuntu Server 22.04 on your Raspberry Pi board. If you like this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.